Oh, we have a huge show today. Not only are we doing the first ever rookie mock draft on the Fantasy Footballers, but we have a massive, important announcement you do not want to miss, and we will see you there. Subscribe, like, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, May 10th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, back with you. Big show. Big, big show. Big week. Big show. Big show, big week. What else you got? Big deal. Big Okay, <laughs> big okay. deal. Big announcements. Mac? Oh, oh, oh no, man. No, no, no. I'll take All a right. Big Mac. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> No, we have a lot going on. Welcome into the show. Excited to be with you. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers for the Instagram content. For the gram. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe over there. Click the bell. We like to go live from time to time. We've been known to go live. We've been known to do things live. That's right. That's right. Uh, we also have a big announcement. It's we're, been a while. We're back, baby. It has been a while, but uh, you have asked, and here's your answer. We are going to be back on tour this year doing some live shows. Mini, and little mini mini tour. Baby tour. Yeah. It'll, just a bitty, bitty baby tour. I don't what, even hey. think our manager wants us to call it a tour. <laughs> yeah. I'm no. fairly sure he wants us to take the word tour away from it. Yeah, but let's talk about our tour. Uh, <laughs> our tour is incredible. There's three... Uh, destinations you're probably wondering where it is geographically because you're thinking can I hit all three and right. the answer is yes well if, yeah if, if because you there are plane tickets now readily available for all three of these cities new with, technology with a can-do attitude <laughs> you can make it to all three so if you go to ballerslive.com you can get information about uh, tickets we will be live in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Oh, baby. All righty. We'll be live on June 15th uh, at, where are we at? The L Club. At the L Club. That one's for Brooksy. Going yeah. back to his old stomping ground. He's going to show us. I'm going to leave him there. We're gonna. He's going to show us uh, like which buildings he was beat up behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't know where you were going to go. I used to stay behind this dumpster a lot. <laughs> See, I was going <laughs> to. This is where I got my first smooch. Ooh, can we go on a little? We got to get all the a hits, little Brooks Brooksy. tour. Yes, I want to see the movie theater you worked at. Yeah. That's oh, probably yeah, that's yeah. probably gone. Oh yeah, I mean, that's you know. uh, not much left. Uh, July thirtieth, we will be in Terragram Ballroom in Los Angeles, California, and then we'll be back here in Phoenix at Crescent Ballroom on September third. Oh, all right. So we got East Coast, West Coast. And yeah, we call East Coast now for Detroit because we found out it's on the Eastern time zone. It's very far to the east. It's it, so far to the east. <laughs> I mean, so who near, knew? It's near the coast. Right. Yes. Of um, some of those lakes. Yeah. So uh, LA, Detroit, and Phoenix, come and see us. Come hang out with us. These are fun times. Ballerslive.com for tickets. Right? Yeah. And they're available now. So like you can I'm, pick up your tickets. I'm looking at a Google map here and allegedly... Detroit is further east than Atlanta, and if when you wait a minute, it, it, uh, and if you say Atlanta, that's according to maps, <laughs> I'm, according to the map that I'm looking at, it could be tilted. I uh, there might be some tilt. I feel like if you look, if you print out a map of the United yeah. States of America, and if you want to make that happen, you have to just turn it all <laughs> the way like 45 degrees until that's a true statement. It's just that's that's blowing my mind here. Did you feel like an east uh, an eastern man, Brooks? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, my gosh. Interesting. That's way the nice thing is, is when we go to these places, we don't actually have to know where they're at. We just we buy the ticket the and then we fly know. and the yeah. pilots know where to go. Um, So we'll be there. I mean, we will find our way there. If you buy tickets, yes. we'll show up. 
Um, and then I was I was out back. I was rustling in the bushes, and I found something funny. Welcome to Dynasty Week. It's quite, quite the jam, yeah. Mike. Yeah, it's because it's Dynasty Week. You, you didn't know it was going to be Dynasty Week. But it is. It's and, here. And uh, Mike was actually in the bushes with his guitar. Yes. Just <laughs> ripping it. That's, that's where I do my best shredding. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, Jason, you seem like you were going to speak. I was just, uh, I knew that this was Dynasty Week. But I was not hyped the way that I am post shredding. So now I'm like all in. Let's go. So this week, a couple of shows, lots of dynasty content, including a rookie mock draft on the show today. I don't think we've done a rookie mock before or a surprise dynasty week before. So that'll be fun. We'll do some dynasty mailbag. Brooksy, what are we doing Thursday? Thursday, we're introducing a new segment called Where's the Line? Okay, and we're gonna. It's we've been known to cross a few lines. <laughs> yeah, it's basically uh, dangerous. <laughs> kind of comparing uh, trading rookie picks with players. We're, okay, we're asked that a lot. What can I get for this pick? And uh, yes, yeah, so. and some rookie sleepers. It looks like yeah. And then a dynasty quick question right now. Let's do. Brooks it. wants to know a simple tip for somebody who's brand new to a dynasty league. So if you're completely unfamiliar, a dynasty league. You've got one big dynasty startup draft. You're drafting all the major players. They stay on your rosters. And then every year following, you have rookie drafts for the new uh, class of players, but you don't ever redraft mm -hmm. all the veterans. So, uh, Jason, what's a tip you would share to somebody who's brand new to a dynasty league because they're becoming more popular? Oh, yeah. And uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, usually when I'm asked this question, I say in startup drafts, you know, focus more on wide receivers, maybe the quarterbacks over the running backs who die off quick. But I wanted to go a little deeper and talk just the importance <laughs> of contracts. When you are in a dynasty league, you, so much focus is on age, and rightfully so. You know, how many years of prime football does this player have left? But a lot of the focus is just on who's getting paid and whose contract is up and who is easy to cut next year. So, like, when I – basically, my tip for you is if you're going to go make a transaction, pick someone up off of waivers, or probably more often you're, you're wanting to make a trade and you're looking at a, a, at a trade partner, go look at just spotrack, you know, dot com. It will show every single player's contract – when they are able to be cut realistically, um, and you know that I use that every single time. Like I, I can't remember unless I already know the contract situation. Well, he, here's a good example: uh, Devin Singletary in a contract year. Josh Jacobs, no fifth year option picked up. Deontay Johnson in a contract mm -hmm. year. So that may define how you value not just those players themselves, but the rookies or the depth pieces behind them in lineups mm -hmm. that have an opportunity, you know, maybe you trade for them now because, you know, these guys are going to be out the door potentially. Yep. Mike, what's your tip for the, the listeners in a sure. dynasty league? So because it's the dynasty league and your roster is your roster and it's turning it around, feels like, oh, man, my my team last year was terrible. I have we I took home one victory, and it looks like I'm years and years away from actually rebuilding this thing with trades and rookies. And the truth is that you may be closer than you actually realize. Like a a team can turn things around in one off season. You just you get a couple hits in your rookie draft. All of a sudden, your starting lineup looks much stronger. Uh, you you get some luck when it comes to health, and your team is in it. And it's it's just it can definitely make, happen make the, quick. Make the tournament. Make it into the playoffs. It seeding does not matter when it comes to the fantasy football playoffs. We all love to have the bye week, but this isn't like real life for professional sports where it matters. I need to be at home and no, just make it to the tournament and you could do that and turn things around faster than you realize with just a couple hits and one, making one really uh, one real smart trade and it so don't look just doom and gloom at your roster. Yeah, Mike and I were looking at this. In our main Dynasty League, this version of, of our main Dynasty League, we're on year seven, seven or, or so. Or so yeah. uh, I, I think we've got you know six in the books. And we were looking at our two rosters and combine, you know, 30, so 60 players, combine on our two teams, 
I have Allen Robinson left from my original draft. That's right. it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so it's like the turnover. You think, oh, I'm gonna I'll have them forever. I'm gonna have them for a decade. It's like we're we're going in year seven, and there's you know the rosters just change over. It actually brings to mind the fact that I think a lot of people when they get into a dynasty league, you think of it in very like your only time to rebuild is your rookie draft, and that's it. And if you mess that up, you make the wrong picks. There's really like multiple layers of mm -hmm. rebuilding that happens over the course of the year, not just with trades, but with things like immediately following the rookie draft, we have an open free agency period. During the regular season or leading into the season, I got Cordero Patterson off of waivers right before the season began last year. He's given me now two years worth of value in that league. And then during the year, maybe you spend up some fab, you end up picking up a handful of guys during the year. That's seven, eight, nine players that are different from the team and the year before. So uh, my tip was going to basically be for some players in your league, picks are going to just be disproportionately more valuable than real players. They got the fever. For the dynasty league, yes. right? And the pick fever. And the truth is, is like it doesn't matter where those picks are. There's a chance that they miss. So known commodities in exchange for picks, it's been something that I've lived on for a many a year, and, and it's very valuable. We call this the Brooks rule. Yeah. Uh, Brooks, you've been in or near the championship almost every single year you've been in this league. I mean, you don't have any yet because you've run up against me Man, and that Andy. Was, that was like, yeah. you're great, you're bad. <laughs> right, but what would you say, Brooks, over the last like four years, how many, how many rookie draft picks have you had? Like one? Maybe a couple. Yeah, you, you go into oh, I, every rookie draft with just you trade them for real players and your your team is always loaded. Yeah, I do I do the same thing. So for Brooks and I have competed at the, the same division for all seven years. I don't think we've had any almost any first round picks during that run. So it's not to say give them away. It's to say somebody in your league's gonna be hungry. We've mm -hmm. had some managers in our leagues that are just it almost becomes a game for them to pick up as many first rounders as they possibly can where look, that's fun when the rookie drafts, it's happening. alluring, but if you're pushing for a title, if you're competitive and you can get, you know, think about this year, pick four in the rookie draft, you know, who is that going to be? Maybe it's a, let's call it Drake London. Let's say he goes four or, or Jameson Williams, you know, you go pick up a known commodity for that exact same pick You've already cashed in. You've already got the payoff of that draft pick. So that would be my tip as we head into uh, into a new year and many dynasty startup drafts. Um, dynasty is a blast. It's it's, it's a really very, very really fun. fun time. Yep. And the nice thing is you can add several of these leagues to your redraft portfolio, and it doesn't <laughs> feel overwhelming in season because there's not as many. You know, it's a, that waiver day is not crazy. There's a guy That's or true. two that you might look at. So I don't, I don't get overwhelmed by having extra dynasty leagues. No, and and they're they're great for what they are in the off season because you you have a roster, you care about every bit of news because it impacts somebody on the team uh, or in the league. So there's a lot of action in the off season that that makes them fun. News and notes from around the league. All right, Jarvis Landry not expected to re-sign with the Browns. Yep. He is 29.5 years old. Have we... Why hasn't Will Fuller signed there yet? <laughs> like, isn't that the expectation for all human beings? Uh, for fantasy football players, yeah. Yeah, it just seems like a, a given, but what are they waiting for? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe to find out if they have their quarterback for more weeks of the year. I don't know. He's probably hurt himself a couple other times we haven't heard about. Mm, good point. But Jarvis Landry specifically, you know, there's been some rumors about him going to Baltimore. That makes a ton of sense. They just lost Hollywood Brown. But from a fantasy perspective, is there a good spot for Jarvis Landry to go and make an impact? Uh, that's not a bad spot. Um, I've also seen rumors for the Saints that he, you know, him and Michael Thomas, you add in Chris Olave and all of a sudden you go from – what looked like a, you know, one of the worst wide receiver rooms in the league to something decent for Jameis. I don't know that that would be great for Jarvis, but that would be great yeah. for Jameis. I have an interesting dynasty related question for Jar with Jarvis Landry situation. Would you rather have Jamison Crowder 
mm-hmm. who is walking into a 100-plus target vacuum from uh, Cole Beasley in B- Buffalo or Jarvis Landry in the free agent mist? Crowder, easily. Yeah, do you feel that way too? <sighs> I, I lean that way because both are very similar in the sense that they seem like assets at the end of their line and one of them already has a good spot. But, Jar- but Jarvis is just such a better player player like I, I think Jarvis is a better wide receiver than Jamison Crowder by a decent amount did you see who picked up Jamison Crowder in our dynasty league um I can guess based on a tone of <laughs> yeah. a voice yeah because I dropped him <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I I'm excited for the prospect of some targets there spot start here or there another report take it for what you will ESPN Falcons reporter uh, Michael Rothstein believes Atlanta could use Cordero more at wide receiver this season Let's hope. That's when he was amazingly valuable. Yeah, it it makes sense. It will be nice for fantasy football because he is a running back. And if you get a running back out there, you know, running actual wide receiver routes, that is a boost. And it will be interesting to see how the other running backs shake up with the with the depth chart of like I love Tyler Algier out of BYU, but we have to be realistic that he was a fifth round rookie selection. And there's uh, the running back position is devalued to these NFL teams. Get that. But there's a reason why players drop down there. And Damian Williams wasn't great the last time we saw him with the Bears, but he is a name to pay attention to over this offseason to see how news is shaking up because he could be walking into a, a bunch of touches if they need Patterson to play more wide receiver. I mean, the Falcons have proven, Kyle, that they're willing to play subpar talent at running back over the course of an entire season regardless. So if Damian Williams could, even if he's not good, I mean, Mike Davis played a Mm -hmm. lot of running back last year. Patterson, you remember, the reason he was valuable at the beginning of the year was the target total, six, seven, six, nine, five. At the end of the year when he struggled, two, two, two. So you need him to catch the football, either lined up as a wide receiver or out of the backfield to really get any sort of difference-making value uh, from Patterson in that offense. So Cordero, Pitts, Drake London, all there for Marcus Mariota to figure out what to do with them. Uh, Any other news, Brooksy? No, sir. Time to mock. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Oh, we already have a draft order determined. So we're going to rotate through. We're just going to go a couple rounds, right? A little rookie mock draft. A little, yeah, two-rounder. A little two-round mock draft. Mike, you get the number one overall pick. Excellent. What are you going to do with it? That's the draft, real question. I'm going to draft Brees Hall. Uh, Brees Hall, running back. Uh, he was selected by the New York Jets in the second round. His production profile is off the charts. He's big. He's strong. He's extremely fast, as we saw at the Combine. The question for him will be, how much work does uh, uh, Michael Carter get? And Michael Carter could be obnoxious to the fantasy value of Brees Hall, but I believe that sooner than later, Brees Hall it, – it, look, every almost every team has a timeshare with running back. Brees Hall will be the leader of the timeshare, and he's just – he's dynamic in all parts of football, especially with pass catching. So I, I think that he is going to quickly be – an RB1 that people want on their team? Well, it looks like I have the 102. And I will go with my number two ranked rookie. Do you, st- do you have Brees at number one? I do have Brees okay. at number one. I have Garrett Wilson of the exact same New York Jets at number two. Uh, this would be a position where, look, if you're in a real rookie draft and you didn't feel like the rest of the league had that type of – like if you thought he could drop a spot or two, which uh, you have him at – Four, Mike. Jason has him at five. Yeah. If I knew that, I might try to get a little draft capital, move back a spot or two if I really had him at number two. So I think Wilson's NFL ready. I think he has a quarterback that's going to make take a leap forward uh, with some improved offensive line play. And I think the opportunity is there for Garrett Wilson. I think, you know, you look at the other options here. Obviously, if you needed a running back, you could go Kenneth Walker. Uh, Jamison Williams is not going to be ready out of the gate. And so Drake Lennon, with Marcus Mariota, I mean, you can take your shot there too, long term, if you believe. But I think Garrett Wilson, he's my number one rookie coming into the NFL at wide receiver, and he's my number one rookie wide receiver. I think the landing spot's actually pretty darn good in New York, 
and I think they're going to let uh, they're going to let Zach Wilson throw it to Garrett Wilson quite a bit. Yeah, I, I like Garrett Wilson the prospect. I don't like his landing spot as much as some of the other players, which is why he's down at five for me. I would much rather compete for targets with Auden Tate. Um, rather than Elijah Moore. <laughs> what about Moore Zacchaeus? Or the wee little lad. Um, <laughs> uh, so I will take Drake London. He's my yeah. number two prospect. Uh, Mike, I believe he's your number two he is. Uh, right now as well. Um, Marcus Mariota isn't the best, but he's capable enough. And because of the – it's basically Kyle Pitts and Drake London. I think he gets – 115, 120 targets, rookie year, can get near 1,000 yards, and the touchdowns will probably be, you know, four or five. I don't expect a massive breakout season for Drake London, but I do like him, and I think his situation is better than, than Wilson's. By the way, if you want to see all of our competing rookie rankings in the UDK, you can go and check that out, ultimatedraftkit.com, and there's even more rookie breakdowns in the Dynasty Pass. But, Mike, you are back on the clock Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, the first three picks in this rookie mock. Sure. So for me, when Brees Hall and Drake London come off the board, this is where things get interesting of the supply for true impact players at the running back position. It is it's Kenneth Walker. Uh James Cook is my running back three, but like I wouldn't I won't be taking him anywhere near the top of uh of your first round because He'll be a pass catcher and and not utilize like Brees or, or Walker. And there are the tier of these wide receivers is so interesting. There's so many first rounders left that I want to highlight, Andy, what you were saying, your point of take have your guy in mind that you really want here. And this may be a perfection, uh, like a perfect year to move back one or two spots if you're cool with all these guys in this tier and just pick up maybe – Maybe a second next year to move from the 103 to the 105. Like those things can absolutely happen, and I think that that's a pretty sharp move to go with. Uh, I am going to. I had the 104 in our dynasty league. I really wanted to shore up my running back room, and so I'll just I'll go with that consistency of I took Kenneth Walker here at the 104 in the in our dynasty league. I will take him also in the mock draft, knowing that. If you don't take Walker here, you aren't getting a running back of any note, really, that could be an RB1 at any time in the future. Well, Walker's another one of those players where if you go back to Jason's tip in the quick question, be aware of the situation. They re-signed Rashad Penny to a one-year deal this season. Uh, and and beyond that, this could be Kenneth Walker's backfield. Chris Carson, do you still dealing with the injury? Chris Carson may not physically be able to play football again. He's clearly a, one of those uh, cut candidates during the offseason, which is unfortunate, but Kenneth Walker is Just think about go. Think about the logic here of the outcomes that can happen in Seattle. Rashad Penny dominates. Right. Then he gets paid too much money for them to afford to bring him back with Walker. Rashad Penny doesn't dominate. Kenneth Walker has a great first year impact because of that fact, right? Aren't those the only two real outcomes? Yeah, I mean, in either situation, you're talking about year two, Kenneth Walker really having the lion's share. Now, you hope that the offense can improve, that mm -hmm. maybe they can yeah. upgrade yeah. over Drew Locke, and you hope that they throw it to Walker. Walker can catch the ball. I know he didn't in college, but he's a good pass catcher. Whether or not he's utilized that way, TBD. Well, did you hear uh... – old Peach Cobbler, head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, he did say if Drew Locke were in this draft, he would have been the first quarterback taken off the board. That's probably true. He did, he did say that? <laughs> GMs make a lot of mistakes. That's probably true. I don't know. I think Pickett would, I would have I think they would have taken Drew. I would have taken Drew Locke over Kenny Pickett. I would not. I no, I wouldn't. No, I, I wouldn't. no, you wouldn't. All right. <laughs> I will leave you in suspense here. I have the fifth pick in our rookie mock draft, Hall, Wilson, London, Walker. But let's take a quick break. Okay. Hall, Wilson, London, Walker, pick five in our two-round rookie mock draft. This one is uh, it's pretty easy for me on my board, and in fact, on your boards too. Uh, Jamison Williams is the pick, wide receiver for Detroit, 6'2", 189, uh, recovering from the torn ACL. 
uh, a player that really moved up both the NFL and in, in, in dynasty rookie mocks before the draft. Detroit moved up to get him. They have the opportunity. They moved up a lot. Yeah, they have the opportunity to really give him a big part of this offense. And so it will take a little bit more time than some of these other players, potentially even into another quarterback to really have the kind of confidence that you want. But I I like Jamison Williams a lot, so I'll go with him at 105. So I'm I'm up at the sixth spot, and this is the player that if I if you if you have the sixth pick, this is the guy I'm always hoping drops to me uh, here. He's my uh, second wide receiver off the board, Traylon Burks. I think when you're 225 pounds, you are replacing you know, AJ Green. You're not just AJ going Brown. Er, AJ Brown. You're not just going to a situation where you're added in addition to, but now there is a hole that needs to be filled. I really like Traylon Burks. I like the film. I like the early declare. I like the production. Um, and I think that he's just so necessary for this team. This is a team that was a number one seed and he's either going to be good or bad. And they just desperately need him to be good. They've got a great head coach. So uh, I, I see, I take issue with the contention that there's a black or white, good or bad. I think my only thing that I don't like about Traylon Burks is that I think he could be right in between those. He's exceptionally necessary for the offense, but I don't know that he's going to be anything close to what A.J. Brown will be at the NFL level. So I think he could be, like that was my problem with him before the draft was ceiling. It was how high and how good can this player be with that makeup. Um, and so I think you could get okay with Burks. Yeah, Traylon Burks is pretty polarizing in terms of what do people think the outcomes are for him. I'm more on Jason's side that had I not taken Kenneth Walker at the 104, I would have taken Burks there because I, with the immediate opportunity and my belief in him as a player, it would have been an easy pick for me. And this tier of Jamison Williams, Burks, and Chris Olave, that's – it's just who do you prefer? So at 107, this is kind of a – de facto pick of I'm taking Chris Olave who went to the New Orleans Saints the Saints when you do all the the calculations of what they actually traded for him it is a lot uh but great wide receiver solid production early breakout age was playing along like getting production alongside another uh NFL player Garrett Wilson who was just drafted they so, traded 17 picks to get him yes this is, this is what I'm yeah. talking about so that's that's a pretty easy pick I feel like the two easiest picks in the draft are the 101 and the 107 like that it, sure. it's so often Brees Hall and so often Chris Olave he's like or just the whoever the is tier. left yeah Hall Wilson London Walker Williams Burks Olave I'm back on the clock and I'm the lucky one that gets to jump into the next tier. No, that was a oh, sarcasm. Oh, yes, 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 uh, yes. But, you know, at this point in the draft, I'm pretty much looking at three guys. Uh, I'm looking at Christian Watson in Green Bay, Sky Moore in Kansas City. So you have both situations where you have great quarterbacks, um, two very different types of players, uh, big size difference between Christian Watson and Sky Moore. And then I am glancing in Trey McBride's direction at this Ooh. point. If I'm a dynasty team that has a need at tight end, but maybe, you know, I, I'd consider him at this pick, but I'll go Watson. Watson is who I have next up on my board. Uh, six five going to Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers just signed another three year extension. And so I'm going to look to I'm gonna look at Watson's athleticism as a chance to break out in year one earn the trust of Aaron Rodgers. And really, when you look at the rest of the options in the offense, you don't see somebody that can do what Christian Watson, what his ceiling represents in that offense. You've got an aging Randall Cobb. You have a big-bodied red zone threat in Alan Lazard. Uh, you have the corpse. The remains of the Lizard King. Of the Lizard King. But I think Watson offers a lot of upside. And so he is. Uh, at eight on my board, and it's pick eight, so that's yeah, what I'm taking. I knew this was going to work out pretty well for both Andy and I because we, Sky Moore and Christian Watson, you just make so many similar arguments for them. I have Sky Moore one spot ahead of Christian Watson, but I go back and forth all the time. Um, it's a it's a more crowded room, but it's a better 
dynasty quarterback to be tied to. So I'll take Sky Moore. He fell a little bit in the draft, but sometimes those guys that fall, like A.J. Brown, when he fell, you just end up going to a good team, a good situation, and that's where Sky... I, I'm drafting Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid here. That's what I'm drafting at the 109. Yep. I I don't blame you. That's that's where I would have gone with those two guys. And then that makes this pick actually kind of easy for me uh, because I'm not going to reach for running back even though I you know it's hard to find value at the running back or starters in dynasty at the running back position. I'm not going to reach for these guys when there is a first-round wide receiver still on the board. I get it. You you could have a Jalen Rager here. Like, that crap happens. Not every first-round wide receiver hits, but percentage-wise of a first-round wide receiver giving you a couple of useful years is much higher than uh, than going down to the second, going down to the third uh, with the running back position. So I'm going to take Jahan Dotson, who was drafted by Washington. He, he is an absolute burner. Terry McLaurin, you would mentioned contracts Jason maybe Terry is re-signed this year maybe he is not and if he is not Jahan Dotson is the replacement and hopefully is the Washington's believing that he'll be the wide receiver one for this team his situation not necessarily great with uh, Carson Wentz but you don't always draft these players just for their situation sometimes you got to look at the draft capital and look at the talent of the actual player commanders three starting wide receivers McLaurin Dotson and Samuel are all six foot or under. Terry McLaurin's the s- only team in the NFL with that. Is Terry only six feet? Yeah, he's six foot. <sighs> he plays like a six, six five. Six one. He's a monster. Yeah, at least six one. <laughs> uh well, why kick the tires with Trey McBride at one oh eight when you can get him at one eleven? Oh man. At one eleven. So think... it would have been between McBride and Pickens here, but again, you're getting interesting. You're getting the very best at the position in the rookie class, a an established proven pass catcher at the position and in an offense that you know, looks to be tied. Maybe it takes a couple of years because, hello, tight end. But you're tied to a young quarterback and an offense that has really seen production, Max Williams, Zach Ertz, at the tight end position. McBride is going to potentially make a very early impact before Max Williams gets back, but then should be a mainstay at the NFL level for many years to come. It's interesting with Trey McBride because the three of us are all, I think, higher on him than the actual consensus of of dynasty players out there like in our the our ballers dynasty league i got trey mcbride near the back of the second round so we it, it's this isn't normal to see trey mcbride necessarily at the back of the first round i don't disagree with the pick it's it's always tough drafting the tight end knowing that there's they're more than likely going to sit on your bench for a couple years and you have to wait for them to you know, work their way into the offense, but great player, almost a perfect situation as Zach Ertz will be aged out of that contract any like, minute, like halfway through this season. Uh, and then McBride will be a true weapon for Kyler Murray. All right, so I am up here, and uh, George Pickens is my next best wide receiver. That's my favorite wide receiver, but I'm actually going to. You're not going to Pickens him? I'm not going to Pickens him yet. Um, I do like his destination. I think it's another good pick, but here to finish the first round, I am going to take a running back. I don't think it's a reach at this point. Agreed. Um, but I like James Cook. I think that uh, the fact that you know this running back room, uh, Devin Singletary could not be around. This team really tried to make a point. You know, you 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 worry. Okay, he's a pass catching running back, and they don't throw the to the running back that much in Buffalo. Well. It looks like that's something that they didn't like. They went out and tried to find a pass right. catching running back and then drafted one. I think that is a point of emphasis. And I think he's a good running back. So you've got a really good draft capital, round two pick, uh, mixed with a great offense and a future where maybe he takes over. So I'm I'm gonna take James Cook here. Uh yeah, so George Pickens. I fellas, this mock draft is going fantastic for me over here, not having to overthink things. Uh, another second round wide receiver for Pittsburgh. Deontay Johnson's contract situation, we mentioned it. I think he'll be back, but in the NFL, you just you never know. And Chase Claypool was not what we had hoped he would be coming off of his rookie year. Perhaps Claypool elevates himself uh, and gets back on track. 
But George Pickens is a very solid player and gives Pittsburgh the opportunity should they should Deontay command more money than they want to pay him, just move forward with George Pickens and Chase Claypool. Uh, Chase Claypool, little voice crack <laughs> is there, uh, but he's at the beginning of the second round. I think that's a very solid pick. I, I think perhaps your draft is going so well for you because you get to pick every third pick. And if your rookie drafts out there, mm. if you have every third pick, you are going to be very happy with. I just mean from a, a brain power. No, part. no, that's good. Congratulations on George Pickens. Thank you. Uh, second pick of the second round. I'm back on the clock. That is yes, correct. Sir. Decisions, decisions, and uh, it, you know you get to this point and you're thinking about team need more than maybe just total talent the way that you would have thought in the first round? In the rookie drafts I have been a participant in, this is when the true running back thirst reveals itself and some of these guys start getting picked over it, the wide receivers who are the left. It is interesting, the difference between a mock draft where you don't thirsty. have a team and a real right, draft. Right, right, right. Yeah. A real draft where I'm coming in and I've got needs. Here, we're... we're Talk about best player available. Which makes this pick all the more difficult when you start to think <laughs> about that. There's one player I'm really hoping you don't take. Um, I'm going to take John Mechie the third. Nice. I'm going to take the wide receiver okay. out of Houston. Uh, I like I, it. I think he is a guaranteed producer at the NFL level. To what degree, to what ceiling, I don't know. But I think he's going – you talk about opportunity. You're going to come in, in in year one, have a huge opportunity. I actually have confidence in Davis Mills – so I think Mechie may have a huge first-year impact um, and at least produce for your fantasy team, which, look, a lot of these names, you talk about the running back thirst. You're grasping. Yes. You're grasping at hopes of production. So you start to look at what do you have in the bag. Mechie, to me, has a starting spot. Yeah, I mean, they traded up for him. His role is absolutely secure. I don't know the timeline from his ACL, whether or not he will be completely ready to go week one. Uh, but I, I don't I don't mind uh, the pick, and I've moved up a little bit on Mechie over the last little bit. But this is where we we turn from prospects that seem like more sure things or really obvious avenues mixed with talent. And so that's always whenever I'm in one of these drafts where I go, you know what, I'm just going to take this, the first-round quarterback. I'm going to take the guy that I know. Kenny Pickett is getting years of play. Yes, He's going to have fantasy value for years. Uh, obviously, if this was a, a two-quarterback mock, he would be uh, up in the first. But Kenny Pickett, uh, you know, he's a guaranteed player for three years in the NFL, uh, even if he sucks. So you'll you'll be able to stream him on certain matchups. And I'll always take the sure thing here. Yeah, I would have taken him had you not, Jason. Uh, and the yeah, we are the the tiers are very interesting here. Um, when you're looking at draft capital versus your priors of what you thought of, like Wandale Robinson, who went to the Giants in the second round, that was a I would say kind of a universally we were all pretty surprised that the Giants went with that. Uh, and then you have like David Bell went around later, but he went to a, what could be a very good situation. And David Bell will be my pick here. Mm, uh, I'm disappointed. <laughs> that would have been my pick next. All right. Well, there you go. That, uh, <laughs> and in th the reasons being like the draft capital is still solid a day two pick and looking at that, looking at the team, you have Deshaun Watson who on the field is a very good quarterback has provided fan fantasy value for these guys and look at look at the roster and Donovan Peoples Jones is I mean he has a skill set but is he long for that team I don't know Amari Cooper who the name the Amari Cooper still carries a lot of weight his contract still carries a lot of weight the, but the trade compensation didn't carry a lot of weight it did that's where I, what I wanted to point out is they really didn't have to give up a lot to get him and last year like Amari Cooper's production went way down in a situation where Amari Cooper should have been thriving with uh, with the injuries that that team had to deal with. So it's very possible that David Bell can move up this depth chart and be the one or the two on this offense sooner than later. All right, I am at 205, and I will take a running back here, uh, and I will go with the draft capital of Rashad White in yes. Tampa Bay. Uh, both him and Isaiah Spiller in Los Angeles are going to have to wait a little while to 
reveal whether they have staying power at the NFL level. But if you're hunting for a, a running back, Rashad White, you know, third round draft pick, Tampa Bay, Leonard Fournette, how long is he there? I don't know. So we'll take the shot. And a good a good pass catcher. You know, Gio's gone, right? So if Was he ever there? Gio's <laughs> fair. Gio's think, still on the I roster. I think he's there, yeah. Oh, is he really? Yeah, so and Keyshawn Vaughn is still Does, on the roster, but I think that uh it, those guys left He's a in lot. the Andy as a Bella mode at this uh, at this point in time. They left a lot to be desired and Rashad is a electric pass catching running back. All right, I am going to take another wide receiver here, someone that I've been rising on lately because athleticism, draft capital, and opportunity. It, it all kind of comes together here. Um, and I, I think it's I think Matt Ryan's going to find Alec Pierce down the field uh, quite a bit. I, yeah, I don't mind that. So, pick. you know, he's 6'3", 208, fast, great burst, uh, just a real athlete. And there's, I mean... There's a gaping hole uh, yes. anywhere but Pittman. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you're talking Doyle is gone. T.Y. Hilton probably not coming back pascal gone like they need him um and i i think he's going to be better than the current rankings indicate yeah i Either like that it. or ashton doolin's gonna have a great year sure right exactly yeah, right did you hear that sentence yeah so I mean, which that, one's more likely i mean that that's the reality in indianapolis you need more pass catchers so mike you're back up on the clock you have uh two left in the second round so who do you have your you, – so, you, you're so silent over there, contemplative. Well, yeah, uh, we called – and this is the point of the draft where uh, this is the Kadarius Tony pick that some of you made last year. Which, like, once Tony finally got on the field – You heard that. He selected Kadarius Tony. Uh, once once Tony, which was a much maligned draft pick, we no one wanted to draft Kadarius Tony. I didn't want to draft him last year. I finally just – sucked it up and drafted him drafted him in the back of the second in our league. I immediately flipped him for some pieces that my team needed, but once Tony was on the field, the Giants looked like they knew what they were doing and that he looked like he belonged on the field. I'm gonna trust the process again with Wandale Robinson here with an like a early, an early second round pick. And he doesn't have the ceiling of, you know, these these other first round wide receivers. But not every wide receiver is. A, there can only be 12. There can only be 12 wide receiver ones, people. So you got to fill out the roster. And Robinson, Robinson's production profile is fantastic the last couple of years. And I think that he's shifty enough to get it done. Great breakout age. So I will, I will take the shot in the back of the second. One of the most difficult things this past offseason was watching Isaiah Spiller's draft capital uh, or his – potential draft capital disintegrate with the lack of, you know, he couldn't go and run the 40, uh, but his production in at the collegiate level was great. And I, I think the one thing that, you know, and I'm sitting here at 208, I'll take Spiller. The one thing that, you know, is that he will have an opportunity this season mm -hmm. yes, to show will. what he has. And so I'm going to trust the film and what he did at the collegiate level because Austin Eckler will get hurt. He will miss a game or two. He will come off the field. I mean, how, Often did we see other backs in Los Angeles last year and kind of you'd either be mad because Eckler wasn't out there on the field or they'd waste a drive or waste a down on some of their backups. So I think Isaiah Spiller will have opportunities to show what he's made of. And so you're getting into, um, yeah, what was it? It was Justin Jackson for a little while. Roundtree. Yeah, Roundtree. It, it's, it wasn't good. So I, like, I, I think Spiller will have a shot. Yeah, I, I like Spiller's future with the oh, yeah, Joshua Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it does uh, it does scare you a little bit of I mean, whenever you've got these running backs that fall to day three, it's usually not gonna work out, but that's why we're at the back of the second round. I'm going to take a running back who went on day two and he's two hundred and twenty pounds and ran a four four eight. And I'm doing this because it's not my actual roster. And I don't have to personally deal with Kyle Shanahanigans. But, oh, yes. really? But Tyrion Davis Price okay. is a fast, big back that the 49ers drafted uh, in the third round. And man, does that suck. I wish they didn't do it. <laughs> uh, I want Elijah Moore to have it to himself. And I don't want to play the Russian roulette every single week of who is it going to be. 
But draft capital, good offense, good running game, uh, good athlete. I will take the shot here. All right, I'm I'm very proud of us here, fellas. I think this mock draft is going very well. But like it, the other drafts I've been in, all these all these running backs were gone by now. Like people were taking them in the beginning of the second, and for so for me here at the back of the second at the two ten, I'm between two players, both wide receivers, Jalen Tolbert, who was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys because. Looking at uh, draft capital is, is just fine for him. And looking at the, the depth chart, Michael Gallup got the contract that they can they can move on from that you know pretty quickly, and he's coming off a torn ACL. James Washington is essentially a one-year prove-it type of a, a deal. And then he's tied to Dak Prescott for the foreseeable future, and that's a really good foundation for any wide receiver to walk into. You have to compare that to Tyquan Thornton, by the who was drafted by the New England Patriots, another shocking second round draft pick out of Baylor. But Four this, two eight. But this guy is tall. He's not. He's not. Uh, he's not one of the thick boys. Oh, he is a. But he is he, a tooth, six three he's one eighty. A, he's a toothpick. He is. Yeah, he's very thin. But he is so tall and so fast, and he will be tied to Mac Jones and Bill Belichick for the foreseeable future. I would take the sh- I would take the shot on the ceiling here, so I would take Thornton, who went to the Patriots, and just cross my fingers and hope that the curse of the Patriot wide receiver drafts has come to an end. I'm sure this is yeah, the this, one. I know this, this is, is definitely got to be is it. the one. <laughs> in that case, I'll take the other guy. I'll take uh, Jalen Tolbert. Yeah. in Dallas, I was hoping you'd leave Thornton to me, and then I would say all the things that you just said and the potential, and you're just trying to. Uh, cash in on on Mac Jones development and Tyquan Thornton being used in as what Nelson Aguilar wasn't and, right. and getting down the field, but um, like you said, there's an opportunity in Dallas for somebody to contribute right away as well. Yeah, and I'm going to finish this draft with the final running back who was selected on day two. Mm. Uh, I have principles, so I can't I can't uh, draft dude, it. Dude, I I get it. I mean, all of us <laughs> Gibson lovers hate that Brian Robinson Jr. was. Uh, drafted to the Washington Manders, but uh, he was. Yeah, and he, was. he, you know, he he profiles as a back that can get use, be used around the goal line, have some value in fantasy. Um, it's a crowded backfield there, but again, it probably won't be in another year. Are we done? Did we, we do did. it. We did it. Uh, Brooksy, can we get this rookie mock into an article somewhere, Kyle? You want to do that? You want to oh. take care of that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Very was, that, nice. was that the sound clip of Brooks saying it, or is that actually Brooks saying it? That was me. Okay. Um, all right, that's going to do it for today's show. We're going to be doing uh, a brand new segment on Thursday to continue Dynasty Week. So we will uh, examine some Dynasty trades involving rookie picks, how we would break them down. Uh, we'll answer some Dynasty mailbags. So if you have questions for us, you want us to review trades that you've done, you can send those in as well. Um, anything else we need to cover here, Brooksy? Just a reminder, ballerslive.com. We want to see you. If you are anywhere near Detroit or LA or Phoenix, please come out, yeah. see the shows, go to ballerslive.com right now because the tickets will, I mean, they're, they're probably going to sell out, but yeah, limited quantities available. So if you're available and you want to go, make sure you grab your ticket. And I just wanted to, you know, just look back at this first round here. It was interesting because. Look, we're, we are re- redraft people. That's what our show is focused on. We play a lot of Dynasty. We play Keeper. Uh, but in season, you know, we're not diving in on these rookies. So we have people outside of uh, of this show that, I like, I trust their opinions. And and it was people so down, so down on this draft class. And the first round, I think, is, like, spectacular. It looks like there are so many players in that first round that can become true starters uh, for your dynasty squad. I get it. It's not jam-packed at the running back position, but it's crazy to go through that whole first round and still be like excited. I'm like, I'm excited about each and every player that we drafted in that first round. The actual NFL draft filled out really well. It went, like, re- yes, like it went really well. The pick of Wandale Robinson actually allowed a lot of things, like Sky Moore dropping to the mm-hmm. Chiefs and – 
Um, yeah, at the end, you have Traylon Burks with more value than you thought, Sky Moore, Christian Watson, these guys that have more value than you thought going into the draft. Do you think you'll see a, a potential at the end of the year for some dynasty redemption for the wide receiver position overall? If you have some real game breakers in this first round, I mean, obviously it's wide receiver dominant. Right. But um, but you saw Brees sitting at the top. Do you think that there could be a change of power at the top of these drafts? Just like a wide receiver where you go, oh, I should have taken that guy. Yeah. Well, first. Well, well, I just think that we had years where people were getting burned by the likes of Corey Davis or the likes of, right. of Nikhil some of these, Harry. Nikhil Harry, some of the top tier, like, oh, I've got to take a wide receiver. So we stopped doing it. Obviously, Brees took the is taking home half of rookie drafts one on one pick. I really think that it that the dynasty community now it's it's a year by year basis. I think it's based on the talent. If next year's talent has you know a, a dominant wide receiver or a dominant running back, the tiebreaker will probably go to whatever happens this year. So you had uh, draft capital wise, how many wide receivers before Brees went? In the NFL draft, uh, six, I believe, six or seven, seven okay. with Christian seven. Watson. Oh, Watson Christian went ahead Watson. of him because okay. he got traded up for. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Hopefully, you enjoyed the rookie mock draft. Leave your comments. Let us know how dumb we are. <laughs> you always do. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you on Thursday. Take Thank care. you for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.